This video will review some of the basic information necessary to conduct a hearing screening. It is necessary to recognize that hearing screening does not diagnose a hearing loss. It identifies students who are at risk for hearing loss who need further testing. 130 out of every 1,000 children have a hearing loss that can potentially affect communication, psychosocial development, and impact classroom learning. These students often display frustration and anger and they may frown and strain to hear when listening and say huh and what frequently. These students can become easily fatigued. They may have limited attention for class participation and look for visual cues, such as watching fellow students for instruction. They may prefer individual activities such as looking at books rather than playing with other children. Students with hearing loss, even a mild hearing loss, are at greater risk for poor academic achievement than students with normal hearing. They have more difficulty listening and understanding in the presence of background noise. Students with hearing loss in just one ear are more likely to have to repeat a grade than a student with normal hearing. Identification is the first step in intervention for a student with hearing loss. The ear is a complicated organ used to hear sounds. It takes sound waves from the air and transforms them into signals that the brain can understand. The ear has three main parts, the outer ear, middle ear, and inner ear. The outer ear is the part of the ear that you can see. The pinna is the outermost structure that acts like a satellite dish, catching the sound waves and directing them into the ear canal. The ear canal directs the sound waves to the eardrum. The middle ear begins at the eardrum. The eardrum is attached to a chain of bones called the ossicular chain. The individual bones in the ossicular chain are called the malleus or hammer, the incus or anvil, and the stapes or stirrup bone. When the sound waves hit the eardrum, the drum vibrates the chain of bones in this air-filled cavity and the signal is sent to the inner ear by the vibrating bones. The inner ear or cochlea is a fluid-filled tube coiled like a snail and lined with thousands of tiny hairs. Each movement of the middle ear bones creates a fluid wave in the inner ear. The movement of the fluid causes the hairs to move and convert the signal into electrical energy that is passed onto the brain and interpreted as sound. A conductive hearing loss is a problem in the outer or middle ear. In many cases, a conductive hearing loss can be medically or surgically treated. One characteristic of this hearing loss is the student may still be able to hear his or her own voice at the normal level, but is not able to hear other people. Four common causes of conductive hearing loss are impacted earwax, draining ear, perforated eardrum, and middle ear infection, also known as otitis media. A sensory neural hearing loss is caused by a dysfunction of the inner ear or auditory nerve. This loss is usually permanent and is not medically treatable. With this type of hearing loss, a student may have difficulty hearing his or her own voice as well as other people talking. Common causes of sensory neural hearing losses are meningitis, prenatal rubella, family history of childhood hearing loss, and hearing loss associated with aging. A mixed hearing loss includes both a conductive and sensory neural hearing loss. The conductive part of the hearing loss may be medically treatable, but the sensory neural part is usually permanent. Frequency is a physical characteristic of sound. When listening to sound, we perceive changes in frequency as changes in pitch. The normal ear can perceive sounds from a very low pitch to a very high pitch. The frequency range for normal ears is 20 to 20,000 cycles per second or hertz. The range of sounds for our daily listening needs is limited to a smaller frequency range, specifically frequencies of 500, 1000, 2000 and 4000 hertz. These are critical for hearing and understanding speech sounds. A student with a hearing loss in this frequency range has a distinct disadvantage compared to students who have normal hearing. A student with a hearing loss may hear some sounds but not understand speech. In other words, the child may hear someone speaking but have difficulty understanding what is being said. Intensity is another physical characteristic of sound. When listening to sound, we perceive changes in intensity as changes in loudness. The normal ear can perceive very soft sounds to very loud sounds. The intensity ranges from about 0 decibels to over 100 decibels. A student with a hearing loss loses the ability to hear soft, moderate and sometimes even loud sounds, depending on the amount of hearing loss. The audiogram is a graphical representation of hearing ability. Frequency or pitch is located along the top of the graph. Intensity or loudness is located along the side of the graph. A lawnmower has a low pitch sound, but it is very loud. A bird whistle has a high frequency or high pitch sound, 
but it is very low in intensity or loudness. The sounds of speech vary from low to high pitches and from soft to moderate loudness. The speech sounds are commonly represented on the audiogram in the shape of a banana, the speech banana. Low pitched sounds like mm and ng would be located in one part of the speech banana and higher pitched sounds like sh would be located in another part. Students with normal hearing can hear all of the speech sounds. Students with a mild or moderate hearing loss may hear some of the sounds but not others. To them, speech may sound muffled and difficult to understand. Students with a more severe hearing loss may not be able to hear any of the sounds of speech without hearing aids or other amplification devices. An audiometer is an electronic instrument designed to measure hearing. Avoid dropping or banging the audiometer as it is easily damaged. The tone level or tone button produces a tone when pressed. There are two dials. One controls the frequency of the sound and is measured in Hertz abbreviated capital H small z. The other controls the intensity of the sound and is measured in decibels abbreviated small d capital B. The earphones should be cleaned after each child using an alcohol free wipe. Alcohol based cleaners may dry out the rubber cushions. Moisture should be kept away from the hole in the center of the earphone. Perform a listening and visual check every time the equipment is turned on. Using the following steps, inspect the cords and headset for any visible damage. Be sure they are correctly connected to the audiometer. Put the headset on and check your own hearing at 20 decibels at 1000 Hz in the right ear. Then check 2000 and 4000 Hz also at 20 decibels. Then check the left ear starting at 4000 Hz, then 2000 Hz and finally 1000 Hz keeping the intensity level at 20 decibels. At the beginning of March each year, please send your audiometers, including headphones and cables to our local service provider. The date of the last calibration check should appear on the audiometer.